Welcome to our video devotional for today, Friday, January 4th, 2019. This week here at Covenant Keepers Ministries, we've been discussing consecrating ourselves to the Lord. We started by talking about repentance, then presenting our bodies as dedication to God. We talked about Bible studying. We've talked about prayer, important things in, in maintaining a, a consecration, a surrender to the will of God for our lives. And today we want to talk about grace living. Grace living. I want to direct our attention to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12 in the Amplified Bible. For the grace of God, his unmerited favor and blessing has come forward, appeared for the deliverance from sin and the eternal salvation for all mankind. It has trained us to reject and renounce all ungodliness, irreligion, and worldly passionate desires to live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout, spiritually whole lives in this present world. God's grace gets polluted from two sides. On the one side, grace runs counter to the way the world works. So it's difficult even for mature believers to grasp it and get used to it. The world works on the merit system. If you do well, well in school, you get good grades and you win awards. If you do well in sports, you make the team, you get a lot of applause. If you get into college, the merit system continues to reward excellence. This carries over into the business world after college. Exceptional performance earns promotions and raises. Sloppy performance, eh, you get fired. In the spiritual realm, all the world's religions, except for biblical Christianity, work on the merit system. Even the major branches of Christianity, the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox Church, teach a system of merit salvation where you have to add your works to what Christ did on the cross in order to go to heaven. And every one of the cults that I'm aware of, it's a works-based system. The merit system of salvation permeates the public mind. Ask anyone in the, in the street his opinion about how a person gets into heaven, and you'll hear something about being a good person. It was at the heart of Pharisaic legalistic religion in the times of Jesus and Paul. But God's grace also gets distorted from another side, which makes the grace of God in uh, for which mistakes the grace of God, excuse me, for licentiousness. Many professing Christians wrongly think that God's grace means that he gives out free passes that allow us to sin with no consequence for our disobedience. If you emphasize the need to obey God's commands and do good works, they call you a legalist. If you warn them that their sloppy view of sin will, will result in God's discipline, they don't want to hear it. Their mantra is simply this. I am not into your rules kind of religion. I'm under grace, not law. For them, grace means permission for sloppy living. And the scripture says in the New King James in verse, verse 13, it says, uh, or excuse me, verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. So there's instruction involved in grace and there's empowering involved in grace. The word instructing means child training. It includes teaching, but also correcting and disciplining. It's a process that begins at salvation and continues until we stand before the Lord. But note that grace does not mean hang loose and live as sloppily as you please. Rather, grace trains Grace disciplines and grace instructs us in godly living. So what does grace do? Well, verse 12 says it teaches us to deny ungodliness and world desires. It teaches us that, instructs us, avoid this, do not do this. Secondly, it trains us to live sensibly, righteously. It says we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. And in the, in the Amplified, it says, that we should live discreet, temperate, self-controlled, upright, devout lives. And then if we were to follow the scripture on verses 13 and 14, grace teaches us uh, to, to live in godliness by looking ahead 
and then looking behind us. So if I were to summarize this, I, I would agree that grace is the unmerited favor of God. That's one aspect of grace living, but the other aspect of grace living is that it empowers us to live godly. It trains us, disciplines us, corrects us to live godly. See, when the Holy Spirit came into your life at deposit, guaranteeing your salvation, when you repented and turned from sin, you received the power to deny passionate evil desires that dwell in your flesh. See, grace is magnificent. It envelops the, the mercies of God. At the same time, it envelops the power of God to live a life pleasing to the Lord. Probably not as pleasing to mankind, but pleasing to the Lord. So I want, to, I want you to know this. Consecration to God involves grace living where we get deliverance from our sin and power to walk godly in Christ Jesus. So as you're consecrating yourself to the Lord this week, I encourage you to understand God's at work in you and he plans to bring this to completion for his glory. Oh, Father, we praise and honor your name today. Let grace flow in abundance, oceans of mercy and mountains of grace and tons of empowerment. Holy Spirit power that raised Christ from the dead flow through everyone who watches this video to please God in lifestyle by living holy, devoted to God. Oh, I praise you, Lord. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to me. I enjoy the richness of your love every day, and I praise you for it. Have your way as we consecrate ourselves to you. Set the tone for 2019. We belong to Jesus. Amen. Well, you've set the the year in order, let's follow through. Let's obey the Lord and live godly for his glory. Have a blessed day.